Right before daybreak, they had slowed down, for they had finally made it to the outskirts of the town. There are plenty of trees we can use as cover located two miles south of us, said Alicia. Waninyekova said. That is where we shall go. Heading toward the tree line, Waninyekova observed the tree line, looking for movement of an ambush. Looking up, he sees an object hurtling down from the skies. Impi! Waninyekova shouted. Obey, not knowing what was being said, shouted. It is coming straight down from the sky too fast. We need to back up and fast. Everyone backed up a bit, and it slammed into the ground, sending dirt and debris everywhere. After the dust settled, an enormous door, fifty feet in height, stood in front of them. The door slowly opened, and standing there on their horses, they looked at each other. Waninyekova said, I don't sense any danger. He signaled his horse to go on as he entered the doors, soon followed by the rest. A stranger standing near a table said to them, Welcome. Sabaoth has seen that you were weary and is now giving you rest. Come, relax and dine, for no flesh has ever entered heaven's gate. But you must not pass the tree line, for you would surely die. Sabaoth has made this place just for you. Everyone was in awe and slowly got off their horses. Please sit and dine, for I know there are many questions among you. There stood a very long table with a feast of their favorite foods. Everyone sat down and enjoyed themselves as they spoke to the man. Daniel, being the youngest, asked the man, So, who are you? The man smiled. The human tongue cannot pronounce my name. But I'm known as Mshika. One in Yekavu and Obe, quickly knowing who he was by name, stopped eating and bowed. No, Mshika said. Please rise. Seeing the reactions of Waninyekavu and Obe, Daniel looked at Waninyekavu and asked, Who is Mshika? Waninyekavu said, We never got that far in the Torah. He's the son of Sabaoth who came to earth to see why we were having problems obeying him, so he came down as flesh like us, to see and feel sin. He's our attorney, our redeemer. Daniel asked, What is sin? Mshika said to Daniel, Sin is those things that Sabaoth hates. Like pride, lust, greed, and there are many, many more. Unlike man, everything is sin but they compare sin by their own definition, not Sabaoth. You'll know them soon, for you will become a great prophet for Sabaoth like in the days of Isaiah, for his spirit dwells within you. He turned to the sisters. Grace, mercy, and joy, I have named you these names because you are dear to my heart. Then he turned to Joam and Jonathan, two brothers that remind me of the two brothers who were my disciples James and John, pointing at Elijah and Elisha, also the same spirit of whom I named you. Tears rolled from his eyes. You bring me great joy, for you have obeyed the word of Sabaoth, and you'll make a great and mighty force the world cannot stand. He stood up and said, Behold, Obey, your gift from Sabaoth shall be given, and no man will believe it and wanting Yekavu an unwavering spirit, a faithful servant of Sabaoth. He took a seat and continued, It is an honor to be here. Let us dine together and enjoy one another's company, for it is Sabaoth's will that we do so. Everyone ate and talked. Laughter and joy filled the air. Wanin Yekavu asked Mshika, I had a vision the other day and seen this lady a few times, come to think of it. Dressed in ancient clothing, however, she was in a time I know not of. She called herself Akila Malek? Who is she? He smiled. Yes, Akila Malek. She's a prophetess, a guide of the blind, and the voice of Sabaoth. She will guide your great-grandson, Kush, to his destiny, as she has done for your ancestor before you. Her words make me smile. Her spirit brings me joy. Truth springs out of her mouth like a well, and she will bring down strongholds with her voice. He paused for a moment. Listen to her words because she is not of your time. Many things you will not understand, but your grandson will. It is what turns his heart to Sabaoth. 